Hey everybody, before we get started today, I just want to remind you, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so you can be entered for the ASUS ZenBook 14 giveaway on August 31st, 2021. Enjoy the video. So you've made the decision. You've made that decision to leave Windows. You want to leave Windows and try Linux. Well, a lot of people out there will tell you, go with Linux Mint, go with Ubuntu, go with Debian. I disagree. I think if you're going to start out with Linux, I think you need to go with an Arch-based distribu distribution, which is a rolling release, which means you will consistently get updates. And I would go with Manjaro KDE if I were you. There are thousands of reasons to leave Windows, whether it be security, whether it be the constant communication between your computer, laptop, and Microsoft, the information that they take from you inside of Edge to advertise to you, it really gets annoying. I get tired of when I was on Windows doing searches and the next thing I know, my Edge browser was full of advertisements for things that I had looked up or I had come in contact with. So the first two steps you need, you want to try it first. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to zip on over to the Manjaro site, manjaro.org. Click on download and you're going to be offered XFCE, KDE Plasma, or Geno, or Gnome, however they pronounce it out there. My recommendation to you is to go ahead and get download the KDE Plasma version when you click on it. It's going to give you the option to download from a torrent. I usually just do the basic download. Download in your download files. Don't do the minimal. You're going to want to do the top version, the 64-bit download. When you click on it, it'll say, great, take me to download, and it'll download. Another tool you're going to need is Rufus. Rufus will take your ISO file and install it onto your USB stick. Now your USB stick, you want it to be a minimum of 16 gigabytes. Once you download it and you run it, this is the screen you'll see. It'll tell you the device is either a SanDisk or Lexar, whatever kind of USB you have. And then your boot selection right here will be empty. It'll say select over here, you'll select and it'll say download or browse or search. Click on search, go to your download file where that downloaded. Click on that and it will fill this field up right here. It'll say Manjaro 21.1.0, MBR, BIOS or UFEI. You're good to go there. You don't need to touch anything. Once it states your device is here and Manjaro boot selection is here, you go down here and click start and this status bar will go to work it'll start putting Manjaro on your USB stick. Once that's done, it will come up and say ready. What you'll want to do at that point is do a search on whatever model computer or laptop you're using and find out how to enter boot selection. It'll either be escape key, F12, F10. There'll be somewhere that'll explain to you that during restart or during power up, you press this key repeatedly and it'll bring you to a boot menu your USB stick will show on that boot menu it will say Manjaro arrow down to Manjaro hit enter and it'll begin to load now on some newer computers what you'll run into sometimes is you'll get a red screen that says secure boot is enabled you cannot boot from your USB this is a way for you basically to have to go through another step um, I think Microsoft was heavily pushing this to keep people make they thought the people that weren't as familiar with computers wouldn't try Linux if they got a red screen. So what you'll do is you'll have to find out how to enter your BIOS files. And you're not doing nothing major, don't be scared. Just find out whether it's the escape button, F12, F10. Generally, if you go into a boot menu, it'll say enter setup. You arrow down to enter setup and it'll take you to your BIOS files where you'll want to locate security. And what you'll see under security is a toggle that'll say secure boot, enable, disable. All you want to do is disable, save and exit, restart, enter into your boot menu again, start from USB and it'll load up. When it loads up, it'll look basically the same as what you see on my screen right now. 
other than the fact that it'll have documentation and it'll have install Manjaro. Now what I recommend you do here is play around with it for a little bit. See if it's something that you like. See if it's something you can get used to. Generally speaking, the first time I ever booted into USB with Linux, I was hooked. Uh, I didn't have pop-ups, you know. I hated being in Windows, and I would consistently get notifications. Boom, your OneDrive is low. Boom, you need to buy more space. Boom, we're having a special in the Microsoft Store. It was constant notifications from Microsoft trying to get me to spend money, spend money, spend money, spend money. You don't want to do that. But what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to, you know, go around. You'll be able to log on to your Wi-Fi. You'll be able to basically give it a test run straight off that USB stick. It will be a teensy bit slower than what it is once you load it onto your system. Not much, depending on the speed of your USB. But you'll be able to go in and you'll be able to look at Firefox. You'll be able to go in and look at your file managers. You'll be able to go in and just basically give you a feel of, yeah, I, I, I can do this. I want to do this. Now, once you do that, you'll just want to go up and click on install, and it goes through a basic install. It'll ask you what region you're from, keyboard layout, have you set up a username and password, and then it'll come down and tell you, do you want to erase disk and install? Click erase disk. Below that, you will see the option to add a swap file. Now on this, you'll want to add the swap file. That's eight gigabytes of hard drive that are put aside. And basically that's for hibernation. That's for when it, you know, powers off. It saves your status, saves where you are. And then when you either reopen your laptop or you click on your desktop and it comes back up you enter your password let you back into the system and then you go from there and then once it's installed it'll say restart you will restart and it'll be met with this screen right here you'll be wide open well actually don't let me lie to you you will actually be welcomed with this screen right here You'll have a bunch of documentation. Your forums are here. Uh, you can get involved with the project. Release info. You can get your release info on Manjaro 21.1. You can go to settings. Let me make sure that your system information is good. Like we're running KDE Plasma 5.22.4, KDE Framework version 5.85, QT version, kernel version graphics platform it'll describe your hardware i'm running the amd ryzen 5 12 cores with built-in graphics and i have the nvidia on top of it uh, i'm actually running eight gigabytes of memory and then the graphic processor that i'm running off of right now is the amd renoir and then once you get into it you can open your settings uh, then you can start playing around with it you can do this on usb too you can change your appearance uh, application styles, plasma styles. There are so many ways to customize uh, Manjaro that it looks better and performs better than Windows ever thought and you're not consistently getting notifications to buy something. You can go over into Firefox. Once you've got Firefox booted up, you if you've already got a Firefox account, you can log into it. If not, you can set up your Firefox account now what I do recommend is if you are leaving Windows and you have been using Edge or Chrome or anything like that if you've got to log into Chrome you can download Chrome or Chromium whichever one you want to do on this system uh, I recommend Chromium because Chrome, uh, Chromium doesn't track you like Chrome does you can zip over here into your software add or remove and do a search And there's your Chromium web browser. That is the same as Chrome. It just does not have all of Google's tracking trash in it. So you won't be seeing uh, advertisements and things like that when you do searches on your system. Now that is the basics of making the decision of leaving Windows 
giving Manjaro a test run, seeing where you will feel comfortable and if you want to make that leap. If you don't want to make that leap right off the bat, you can continue to run it off of a USB if you want. Um, but I, I promise you, it's it's a scary decision, I know, because I went through it, because I had everything that I was doing tied to Windows, and I just, you know, got to a point after about three or four days, I'm like, I'm going to pull the trigger. Uh, worst case scenario, if I, if I don't like my Switch, I can go back to Windows, and I have to honestly say that since a, one day in 2009, when I initially installed Linux Mint, I have used Windows other than at work. I have not used Windows. So that is your basics of your decision to leave Windows and your decision to try a Linux distribution. And I would most definitely recommend Manjaro Linux. Um, it is Arch Linux. And for those of you who don't know who what Arch Linux is, it's like the bleeding edge. It's the most up-to-date kernel. Uh, the kernel is the code that actually processes all of the information to run your PC. Uh, and the most updated versions of your applications that you will be using. In the next video, I'm going to go through settings, show you all the settings and where they're at, and just how customizable Manjaro is. I thank you for watching the video today. Please make sure you like and subscribe so that you can be entered for the ASUS ZenBook 14 giveaway on August 31st, 2021. But like I said, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.